man like him were to assume the dictatorship of the modern world, he would succeed in solving its problems in a way that would bring it much needed peace and happiness. What a beautiful testimony, and certainly something well appreciated these days. Letter U. Then we find that K.S. Rakamakrishna Rao, in his he was a Hindu professor of philosophy, a booklet that he has, it's called Muhammad the Prophet of Islam. And he calls him the perfect model for human life. He explains his point by saying, the personality of Muhammad is most difficult to get into the whole truth of it. Only a glimpse of it can I catch. What a dramatic succession of picturesque scenes. There is Muhammad the Prophet. There is Muhammad the warrior. Muhammad the businessman, Muhammad the statesman, Muhammad the orator, Muhammad the reformer, Muhammad the refuge of the orphans, Muhammad the protector of the slaves, Muhammad the an emancipator of women, Muhammad the judge, Muhammad the saint, all, all in all these magnificent roles in all these departments of human activities. He is alike to a hero. We stop there, that'd be enough, but we've got more. The letter V. What should we think about our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when someone with the worldly status, such as Mahatma Gandhi, speaking on the character of Muhammad, peace be upon him, says in his uh, work, it's called Young India, he said, I wanted to know the best of one who holds today undisputed sway over the hearts of millions of mankind. I became more than convinced that it was not the sword that won a place of Islam in those days in the scheme of life. It was the rigid simplicity, the utter self-effacement of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the scrupulous regard for his pledges, his intense devotion to his friends and followers, his intrepidity, his fearlessness, his absolute trust in God and in his mission. These, and not the sword, carried everything before them and surmounted every obstacle. When I closed the second volume, he's talking about the prophet's biography, I was sorry that there was not more for me to read of this man's great life. Again, if we stopped, that would be sufficient, but let us read on. Letter W. It was the English author Thomas Carlyle in his Heroes and Hero Worship simply amazed as to, and there's a quote, how can one man single-handedly wield the warring tribes and wandering Bedouins into a most powerful and civilized nation in less than two decades? And if we stop, that's sufficient. But we'll go on. Letter X. And Diwan Shand Sharma writes in Prophets of the East, he says, Muhammad was the soul of kindness, and his influence was felt and never forgotten by those who around him. That's in Prophets of the East, published in Calcutta in 1935 on page 12. If we have nothing more than this to mention about the Prophet Muhammad, it should be sufficient. It will continue. You see, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was nothing more or less than a human being. But he was a man with a noble mission, which was to unite humanity on the worship of one and only one God, and to teach them a way to be honest, upright, and living based on the commandments of Almighty God. He always described himself as a servant and a messenger of God, and so indeed every action of his life proclaimed exactly that. Let's go on. Letter Y. Speaking on the aspect of equality before God, God in Islam, the famous poetess of India, Adu says, it was the first religion that preached and practiced true democracy. For in the mosque, when the call for prayer was sounded and worshippers gathered together, the democracy of Islam was embodied five times a day when the peasant and the king kneel side by side and they proclaim that God alone is the great. I have been struck over and over again by this indivisible unity of Islam that makes man instinctively a brother to his fellow man. This was from Ideals of Islam 
and speeches and writings in the Madras, and this was Madras, India, which is now called Chennai, by the way. It was published in 1918. It's on page 169. Z, now we come to Z. In the words of Professor Orangrinji, he says that the League of Nations, founded by the Prophet of Islam, put the principle of international unity and human brotherhood on such universal foundations as to show candle to other nations. He continues, the fact is that no nation of the world can show a parallel to what Islam has done towards the realization of the idea of the League of Nations. Now we're going to come to the next Z. I had to come up with the, another letter because we still got more to say. So the next Z, <laughs> Z2, it was Edward Gibbon and Simon Oakley on the profession of Islam. They write in History of the Caesarean Empire. He says, I believe in one God and Muhammad, an apostle of God, is the simple and invariable profession of Islam. He's quoting the statement. He said that this statement, I believe in God and Muhammad is the apostle of God, is in it simple and invariable profession of Islam. The intellectual image of the deity has never been degraded by any visible idol. Islam doesn't allow that, you see. The honor of the Prophet Muhammad has been never transgressed the measure of human virtues, and his living precepts have restrained the gratitude of his disciples within the bounds of reason and religion. That's in the history of the Caesarean Empires, published in London in 1870, on page 54, if you want to look it up. Next Z, we got another Z coming up. This is Z3. Wolfgang Goethe, he says, uh, and he's perhaps the greatest European poet ever, and when he talks about Mohammed, peace upon him, he says that he is a prophet and not a poet, and therefore his Quran is to be seen as divine law, not as a book of a human being made for education or for We want to mention that people do not hesitate to raise the divinity and even make gods out of other individuals whose lives and missions have been lost in legend. Historically speaking, none of these legends achieves even a fraction of what Mormon peace be upon him had accomplished. And all of his striving was for the sole purpose of uniting mankind for the purpose of worship of one God on the codes of moral excellence. Muhammad, peace be upon him, or his followers, never at any time claimed that he was a god, or a son of a god, or an incarnate of God, or a man of divinity. But he always was, and is even today considered as, the simple messenger chosen by God. Today, after a lapse of 14 centuries, the life and the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him, have survived without the slightest loss, alteration, or interpolation. These teachings offer the same undying hope for treating mankind's many ills, which they did when he was alive. This is not a claim of Muhammad, peace be upon him, or his followers, but it's the inescapable conclusion forced upon a critical and unbiased now it's up to you. You're a rational, thinking, concerned human being. As such, you should already be asking yourself, would these extraordinary, revolutionary, and amazing statements all about this one man really be true? What if it is true? Then, who do you say is Muhammad? For more references and information about this program, visit our internet website at islamalways.com slash Muhammad. Spell it I-S-L-A-M-A-L-W-A-Y-S dot com slash Muhammad. M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D. Find our website. It's always open 24 hours a day. Always. Until next time.